This is the first video in the Australian Curriculum Unit 2 in Senior Chemistry, which is called Molecular Interactions and Reactions. This is referred to in the ACT as simply molecules. This first section of the unit, Intermolecular Forces, maps fairly closely to the Australian Curriculum section called Intermolecular Forces and Gases, but I've chosen to take the gas part out and make it a separate short section on its own. We'll meet that later. In this section, we'll look at molecular shape, VSEPR theory, intermolecular forces, and chromatography. We'll also look at the particular case of water and how its intermolecular forces make it a very special and useful molecule. And that will allow us to segue into section two, which is aqueous solutions and acidity. So we talked in semester one about models, about how different models incorporate and explain different features of things and are useful for different things. We specifically looked at models of the atom and how they've developed through time as scientists gained more information about the atom. The point of having a model is that it explains what we observe and it generates useful predictions about new systems. We also use models to describe different aspects of bonding. For instance, last semester we talked about metallic bonding in terms of a lattice of positive ions surrounded by a sea of electrons. This is a model, a way of thinking about metallic bonding that explains a lot of what we see. But if you study chemistry further at university, you'll go into more complex models that more accurately and precisely describe what holds metal atoms together. When we looked at covalent bonding, you learned how to draw Lewis structures as a way of representing how molecules could be formed from covalent bonds. Lewis structures give you information about which atoms are joined to each other in a molecule. However, they don't give you much information about what the actual shape of the molecule would be in 3D. And this is where VSEPR theory comes in. For instance, a child's drawing of a house involves structural relationships. It shows that the house has a roof and walls and a door and windows, that the roof is attached to the walls and that a door is in the wall. A more advanced model might include spatial relationships like the 3D nature of a house. Both of these models generate predictions. For instance, you could predict from the first that the roof will be on top of the walls and that there will be three windows in the wall. For the second, you could predict what the house would look like if you stood directly in front or to the side. And these are testable predictions, which is what you need from a model. These two drawing models correspond quite nicely to the difference between a Lewis structure and a VSEPR structure for the same molecule. Lewis structures tell you how the atoms are joined together, while VSEPR structures take the Lewis information and add information about how the atoms are arranged in space. So let's briefly go back and do a little Lewis structure revision. We're going to draw the Lewis structure for CHCl3, which is called trichloromethane, or uh, used to be known as chloroform. So first we've got to total up the valence electrons, four for carbon, one for hydrogen, uh, three times seven for the three chlorines. That gives us a total of 26. Then we decide on the central atom. Carbon forms four bonds, and hydrogen and chlorine usually form one, only one bond each, so carbon should be in the middle. I draw bonds to join the, join the atoms together. That's four bonds, so that uses up eight of my electrons, and I still have 18 left. Hydrogen now has a full outer shell. Uh, being in the first period, it only needs two electrons to get a full outer shell, so I can't put any lone pairs on it. Each of the chlorines, however, only has access to two electrons at the moment from the bond, so they need some lone pairs to get a full outer shell. With 18 electrons to distribute, I have enough for six electrons on each of the chlorines, which gives each one a full octet. Now, this is fine for a 2D representation, but what does the molecule really look like? I mean, what shape is it? Is it a flat cross shape, like we've drawn it here, or do the atoms poke out of the page somehow? The Lewis model gives us no information about this, so if we want to go further, we need another model that will describe its shape. And this is where the VSEPR model comes in. VSEPR stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion, and in the next video I'll explain what that means and how the theory works. The VSEPR model can tell you about how the bonded atoms are arranged in space, and therefore what the overall shape of the molecule is. In the case of trichloromethane, VSEPR predicts that the shape of the molecule is like this, which is what we call tetrahedral because the four outer atoms are at the vertices of a tetrahedron. Represented as what we call a ball and stick structure, you can clearly see the 3D shape of the molecule. And when we add more complex computer modeling of the electron clouds of the atom, 
you can really see that the shape of the molecule is a sort of blobby distorted pyramid shape. This last picture here contains more information than VSEPR can provide. Nothing in VSEPR lets you accurately draw the electron clouds like this. But it does illustrate the levels of complexity as you work from a simple model like the Lewis structure up to models that more and more closely represent reality. Incidentally, these uh, colored pictures here come from the ChemEd DL site, which has a database of 3D computer models of molecule shapes. And we'll be using these uh, quite a lot in later videos. All models are based on principles or rules that govern how the model works. The basic ideas behind the Lewis model are that atoms in a molecule are held together by shared pairs of electrons, called bonding pairs, that are located between the two atoms being bonded, and that the remaining valence electrons may be distributed as non-bonding pairs or lone pairs. The VSEPR model takes those principles and adds a few of its own. As the name suggests, it's all about the fact that electrons repel each other since they all have the same charge. They're all negatively charged. So VSEPR says that in a molecule, bonding and non-bonding electrons will repel each other and that the molecule will adopt a shape that allows those electrons to be as far apart as possible. Hence, valence shell electron pairs, that's the bonding and non-bonding electrons, repel each other. So here's your task for this video. Draw the Lewis structure for boron trichloride, that's BCl3, and then have a look at your Lewis structure and think about how the molecule could arrange itself so that the bonds are as far apart as possible. Can you work out what the angle between the bonds in the molecule would be? See you later.